Some time ago, I made this video. And although it was about how to draw the bow, I got a few questions on how to make the smocking. So that's what I'm talking about today. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Mikkel Drew Pelham. I am a digital fashion educator teaching digital fashion design and communication through my company, 383 Design Studio, as well as as an adjunct professor at the Fashion Institute of Technology. I talk about digital fashion design software and communication on this channel. So if those topics interest you, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell. Drawing smocking is actually very simple, especially for a flat sketch because you don't need it or want it really to be too detailed. You wanna simplify the look so that it's clear to the manufacturer, pattern or sample maker what you want. There are multiple ways to do smocking. And in fact, if you wanna know how to actually create, not just draw smocking, there are many video tutorials right here on YouTube. And part of what makes smocking beautiful are the various decorative embroidery stitches that can be applied to it. So I'm going to show you how to create the basic smocking just with straight elastic stitching. And know that you can always add a zigzag or X or some other deco stitch on top for a more decorative appearance. Because of the nature of smocking, it lends itself very well to a pattern brush. I've even seen some people do this with a pattern swatch, but I like the flexibility of being able to bend the smocking if necessary, and you could do that easily with a brush. So let's get started. Drag two horizontal guides onto the page. The first guide will help ensure you draw the gather straight. The second guide is to mark the spacing between your rows of smocking. I'm also going to drag two vertical guides to mark the width of my smocking repeat. Mine's gonna be one inch. Next, I'm going to use my pen or pencil tool and start drawing varying lengths of lines along the top and bottom guides to indicate the gathering. Try to make these as organic and varied as possible. Because it's a pattern brush, the gathers eventually repeat and if the gathers are too similar, they start to look too symmetrical and unrealistic. Once you create one row of gathers, create two rows of stitching. Now, I prefer to do this with solid lines, and you'll see what I mean in a minute, but plenty of people do this with a dashed line. Whenever I've used a dashed line with a brush, the repeat gets a little weird, so I just don't do it. But if you can make it work, use the dashed line to create the stitching. It'll probably be quicker. To use my method, create one short solid line right on top of the guideline to represent one stitch. Drag a copy to the end of your repeat and then use the blend tool to create stitches in between. And you'll probably have to adjust the spacing so that there's enough space between the stitches and it doesn't end up looking like a solid line. Once you finish making the stitching, copy the smocking to make a wider panel. Depending on how you want to use the smocking, you may or may not need to do this. You'll probably want to copy it at least two to three times. Smocking is usually not shown as a thin panel. And the way I plan to use it, it's going to go around the waist of a dress. So I'm going to copy my smocking several times to make a pretty wide panel. Last thing you need to do is add gathers on the opposite side of the top and bottom stitch lines.
Create your definition box. Drag the entire brush to the brushes panel. Choose pattern brush and make any other changes to the brush direction and colorization method. And for those of you who aren't as familiar with brushes or how to create them in Illustrator, I suggest you go watch this video on my channel and there's a link to it in the description. So now let's try using it on a sketch. Draw a line slightly wider than the sketch and then add the brush. To make sure it completely fills the space, cut the line with the brush, select the outline of the sketch, and then switch to draw in side mode. Then paste in place to add the brush to the sketch. Adjust the size and location of the brush if you need to, and then make sure you exit draw in side mode and go back to draw normal mode. Last few finishing touches I'll make to this is to add points along the side seam so that I can adjust and blouse it. One thing to keep in mind is that you may have to go back and adjust the original repeat if it's not wide enough or it's too wide. Changing the stroke weight so that the size of the brush and the size of the smocking gets bigger or smaller will only get you so far. One thing that can help is if you create the smocking on top of the sketch so you have a better idea of how wide it should be. But note that unlike some of the other pattern brushes designers tend to create like stitch brushes, if you use smocking often for different designs, you'll probably have to have multiple smocking brushes. The good thing though, is that this brush can be a great template and starting point for any future smocking brushes you need. So this shouldn't take you long at all to create. Thanks for watching today's video. If you want to learn how to use Illustrator to draw your clothing designs, check out the link in the description to my beginner class. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video if you find it helpful. Have a fantastic week, and I'll see you next time.